Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. We are EBS, your trusted technology partner for over 43 years. We specialize in the development of Sage Business Management and Microsoft Solutions, managed services and secure on-premises and cloud-based infrastructure. My name is Darren Tolley and I am one of the account managers here at EBS. Today, we're joined by SciCon, who we've partnered with for many years. SciCon provide innovative solutions which enhance Sage 200, covering a wide range of business needs. Steve Gemmel, SciCon sales manager, will demonstrate how SciCon CRM helps companies keep track of customer and supplier interactions, including management of cases, opportunities, tasks, notes, and reminders, benefiting your business with a centralized view across all departments. We are recording today's presentation and we'll make this available to you in the next few days. There are lots of recordings on our YouTube channel. Remember to hit subscribe to receive notifications when we load new videos. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat or there will be an opportunity at the end of the presentation in the Q&A session. Without further ado, I will pass you over to Steve. Morning, Steve. Morning, Darren. Thank you for that lovely introduction. I am going to uh, turn off my camera. One, people don't want to see me staring at the screen, but two, just uh, just in case bandwidth drops off. But let's just check the technology is going to work first correctly. So let's just uh, share my screen and then hopefully, Darren, you can confirm for me whether or not you can see the Cycon website. We can see the Cycon website. Thank you. Perfect. So that's that's the first bit past. So thank you, everybody, for joining today. Um, just in terms of the session, what we'll do, we'll start with uh, a very brief overview, just perhaps for those of you who aren't familiar with SciComm. Then what we'll do, we'll talk about what CRM is and what it's not, so who it's targeted at. And then always the fun stuff, as I like to think of it, is we'll get into, uh, we'll get our hands dirty, roll up our sleeves, and we'll get into showing you some of the features, the bells and whistles of the product itself. So SciComm, we are uh, well, classified, just so you can see in the top right hand corner here by Sage as a tech partner plus. Essentially, we're a developer partner of Sage, something which we've been doing for an excess of 20 years. And at present, we only develop for Sage 200. Now, Sage set up this developer community. They focus on the core finance elements, and we've got more agility to focus on uh, more vertical specifics. And if I just click on the screen here and come across to uh, hover over here, you can see a lot of the verticals that we deal with. But the one we're going to focus on today is Cycon CRM. Now, the last thing just to note is we don't sell direct. We sell through the Sage partner community with Darren and the team at EBS, as, as Darren alluded to earlier, being a very long standing partner of Cycon. So uh, essentially what that means from yourselves is with a third point in that triangle with yourselves and EBS and then underpinned by Sage. So. Um, what is Cycon CRM? And I always think this is the important bit is to position what it is that we've done and what it's not. So what we've gone after is probably the 80% of the Sage 200 base who are looking for uh, an out of the box, off the shelf CRM package that sits in Sage and interacts where it dif with different elements. So we've made it that all of the data actually sits in the Sage database. So there's, uh, it's, you know, it's fully, fully integrated with Sage. You've then got functionality in Sage that Sage users can use, but there's also a web portal. Now, what I mean by off the shelf is whilst it's configurable, and we'll talk about some of those elements in terms of the drop downs, what you can't do is you can't bespoke it like you can do with something like Sage CRM. So, for those of you who want something truly customized with uh, bespoke, uh, bespoke screens, changing all the names on the fields and those sorts of things, that's where you'd look at Sage CRM. If you're looking for something which is, and often what you find, actually, I don't know what I want. I just want something simple. I can store company, customer details, et cetera. Then ours is absolutely perfect. So let's just talk about the licensing then. So inside of Sage, I've got my Sage CRM, and I am going to jump between this and the web. So uh, don't worry. Um, don't worry in terms of uh, the interface just yet. But if I come into settings, we actually have uh, we have three types of uh, three types of users. We have an advanced, we have a basic, and we have an intermediate user. Now, all you do is you purchase the appropriate user level for, for your users, and that will then determine what access they have. So a basic user, they will be able to access functionality, which is companies, people, um, 
if you go to an intermediate, sorry, company peoples and tasks, if you go to an intermediate, then we can add opportunities and cases and advanced user then adds campaigns. So integration with MailChimp. So what's really lovely about this straight off the bat is you can mix and match. And what we wanted was by putting the functionality also in Sage, is it means actually a lot of people see CRM as a sales focused tool. All of a sudden, this opens it up to the whole business. So as you'll see a little bit later, we've got the option to be able to, we've got the option to be able to, oh, somebody, I don't know if you can mute everybody for me, Darren. Thank you. Um, so what we're able to do is, for example, log a task against a sales order or a purchase order in Sage. It starts to become multi-use. And by being able to say, well, actually, Chris Donlan only needs a basic user, then of course we can control that. Now, I mentioned the, the elements, so we've got the functionality in Sage, which we'll spend a bit of time in, but we've also got the web portal. Now, this is what the, the website of it looks, but actually there's no data stored in that website. All of the data, as I said earlier, is in the Sage database. Via a web API, it's just refreshing and it's looking at that data each time. Now, when we first launched this, we did have a mobile app, but we've actually got rid of the mobile apps. And what we've done with this technology, if I just click on this in the top right-hand corner, We've actually now changed it. So if you go to the web page on a mobile device, then the screen renders differently. So actually for us, it's easier. We're just developing in two, two platforms essentially. And it just means then as we go to companies, exactly the same functionality in the web, whether you're on a mobile device, a tablet, or on your laptop as I am today, and then being able to drill down to the details. But we will focus on a bit of that uh, shortly. Okay, so. What do the different elements uh, enable you? Well, we'll start with companies. Now, often a lot of the time customers will say, well, um, why do you store the data in Sage? Well, immediately you've got that fully integrated element. So when we first install this, we actually have a migration tool where we can migrate your existing sales ledger and your existing purchase ledger accounts into our tables and then link the two. And there are settings where you can control which users are able to edit uh, the details on the sales ledger. Now, what that means is instantly, once this is installed, you've got access to those companies. And if I just do a company search in Sage, this is a list of all of those records. So we've got customers and suppliers, but then we've got the concept of prospect customers, prospect suppliers as well, even down to end users. So for us, we don't sell direct, we sell via our business partner communities we mentioned. So our customer would be Darren and the team at EBS, with your sales, you would end up as an end user for us. So again, for those of you with that uh, partner type uh, approach or reseller type approach for this, but what it also means is as we come down, we've got things such as, so if I just view this for the moment, this record, we've got details. So if I just access this straight away, I can see if I come to addresses, I can see we've got addresses that have been pulled through from from Sage as well uh, from the sales ledger, but of course I could add my own addresses in there. I've got details in terms of the company name, even down to telephone numbers. And if I was in edit mode, you'd be able to see whether or not I'm able to edit those details and update the sales ledger account. Now, the bit I want to just get across is, as I said, this this um, data is, is mirrored. So at the moment, if I do switch across to edit mode just for a second, so we always open in view mode, it's just easier sometimes rather than editing the records. But actually, if I come to an analysis code, for example, so we can see I've got some analysis and I will talk about those in a moment. If I go to the web and I search for companies as well, there you can see I've got Abbey Retail. What I just wanted to point out here is the data. This is where the data is shared. So if we look here, we can see internal account manager is Chris Donner, and we've got those analysis code. You can see there made to measure discount is 50%. So if I come back into my Sage record here and I'm just going to change that to 60%, and I'm going to save this record. And actually, if I just refresh this page, basically what I wanted to show you was that we can, um, that information would be updated within the server itself. So actually what we'll do, we'll just spend the time in Sage, but whilst you can't see everything in the web, obviously a lot of it's mirrored. Now I did speak a bit about the customization earlier. So if I come down here into the utilities, we've got the ability to import other custom records. So perhaps you're holding your, your records in, in a web format at the moment. But we do have, if I come into maintenance, we've got the concept of being able to at least look up tables as well as then analysis codes and what we call custom fields. And these are available in people, 
available in tasks, cases and opportunities as well. So again, what do I mean by that? Well, some of it will come from uh, from the system itself, you know, as just as a standard. Um, so um, what we've got there is we've got the sources, but again, you can add your own sources into the uh, into the system here. If we come down, we've got um, company types. So again, a couple out of the box here. Some of them are system types, which we can see here, but perhaps you perhaps you have different uh, customer types that you want to record. Again, you can start to utilize these and, uh, and create your own. Analysis codes, this is where you can have up to 20 then in each of the areas. This is where if we're not holding information that you want, you can record it so we can have things like tick boxes, they can be tech field, drop down lists as well. So you can then start to store some data within the system, which um, again makes life easier for you. But the ones I want to touch on are the custom fields, company custom fields, where these are slightly more dynamic. So for example, here now as out of the box, we've got one account manager field and you've got a drop down which looks at your employee list. But actually what I've been able to do is this custom field to say, well, we have an internal account manager. So what I want to do is I also want to be able to pick from the employee list on there as well. And again, we would see that updated within the system, but this can be SQL lists and date and time. So it is possible to customize it within that sort of level. But as I said, if you need to do it over, over and above that, then you'll do that in Sage. Now, as we come back to our company search, what types of information are we holding? Well, if we come back to Abbey Retail for a second, again, we'll just talk through some of the fields. Now, I have had just had a text from somebody to say, hopefully they've uh, finished doing what they're doing on the server, so we will try the web again in a moment. Uh, I need to clear my cache, but I'll do that shortly. But we have this activity field, which we have on a lot of the other screens as well. And what we wanted to do here was just to give you the summary of any changes that are made. But here we can see a tracking note was changed for an opportunity. So there's our linked opportunities to this particular customer. But I can actually see any any of those from uh, those opportunities or linked companies within this field. Details, the sorts of things you'd expect. So again, that's where we can see the account manager. I meant the internal account manager as well. Multiple addresses, your people. And again, we can drill down and start to see that information. Because we're sat in Sage, we can now start to interact with account based details as well. So being able to see customers turnover by year, also turnover by period. But within that, then seeing within that year period, what quotes we had, and I can actually click and drill down into standard stage quotes, performance, what sales orders we uh, we sold in the status, even down to the line level details. So if example, if I come back to some historical data, being able to see what those that particular customer bought during that period. So again, just starting to hopefully getting an idea of the, the, the power within here, but we will put some tasks and stuff on shortly. I can see all the tasks that relate to this particular record. And again, I can see what they're linked to. So whether it's a Sycon project, a sales opportunity, whether it's a task linked to the customer company, a case, we can even do tasks against sales and purchase orders, which again I will touch on shortly. From an email perspective, um, we don't, or we've made a conscious decision not to integrate fully with your Office 365. Now, a lot of CRM systems out there, they'll do that. And it seems like a really great idea. But what you end up with is you end up with emails from your family, spam within your CRM, and it just gets very muddy. So what we what we do is allow you to drag and drop. So literally from your email, you could drag and drop the email um, onto a pane just down here. So you will have a little Windows widget where you've got an email drop pane. So you can just drag and drop the email into there or you can uh, you can attach it. You can even send with templates emails out from within the system. Usual things like attachments could be any relevant documentation, memos, GDPR, obviously very important now. Uh, link companies. So for those of you perhaps where your customers are part of a group, they might have subsidiaries, that sort of thing. So again, being able to link for us where we use this is any opportunities for yourselves. The link company would, of course, be your business partner. Sales order list, because it's sales ledger, if it's purchase ledger, then of course it would be a purchase order list. So again, working within Sage to see relevant details, but alongside standard Sage functionality. And contracts, well, that's only if you've got the Sycon contracts module that integrates automatically as well. So once we've got those details, people pretty much the same sort of thing, but that's kind of your basic record. Now, I just want to move on to tasks. So as I said earlier, your basic user will get tasks. So the principle behind tasks is 
that you need to have reminders or activities that you need to do, but actually they could also be tasks for colleagues. So what I meant, mentioned earlier is I might have a sales order in Sage on the system that uh, we need to follow up. So they're a really important customer. Uh, and what we want to do is we just want to make sure that that's followed up correctly. So inside of Sage, what I'm able to do is open up a standard Sage sales order. So I ignore this pop up. That's just another Cycon add on. And what we've got a CRM task. We'll talk about cases shortly. But from here, what we can do is we can say, well, OK, actually, we need to uh, as a summary of what the task is. So all customer to ensure delivery uh, arrived on time. Now, as a default, it's assigned it myself, but I could assign that to Darren, for example, to follow up or another user to follow that, that up. Which person do they need to speak to? Again, we could pick from there if we have that, but if not, we can click on there, we can add a person in on the fly. Concept of teams as well, so your sales teams, so there's different views for, for teams, but your task type, again, we can start to set some defaults, but this I want them to do a phone call. Uh, again, we can default what the uh, stage stage is going to be. I can even set some time, so I'm going to say, well, actually, I want that phone call to be later on today. It's going to be at, uh, it's going to be at 12 o'clock today, but I want a reminder that's going to be 30 minutes before. And again, I could attach any emails. If I click on save there, so what we're actually doing and what you will see is I will get a pop up during this demonstration to say I've put a task on there. So what's quite uh, what's quite clever here is being able to set tasks for different users linked to a standard Sage sales order. Of course, we can do that for purchase orders as well, um, even down to. I should point out if I come if I come away from our sales order for a moment. even down to if I go into a stock record. So for those of you using stock, and I, I'll pick my good old espresso machine just down here, I'll just amend that. Even down to being able to, you can see it already, raise tasks. And again, I will talk about cases a little bit later against the stock record. So this might be that um, it's been reported to you that from the warehouse that the quality of the products coming in aren't very good. So we want to set a task against that to start to for somebody to start to investigate into this. So hopefully you're starting to see that the benefits there. So again, just coming back into the web side of things. So if I go search companies, got my Abbey retail, just touching on there. So I added the tracking note, saw that earlier. Uh, so that was from uh, the 6th of July, but again, I can see those tracking notes. As I scroll down, there's my 60%. So again, as I said, the data is in Sage. And as we go along, we can see the addresses, even down to that account information. So within the system, being able to see those sales orders and actually open up and see that sales order. Now, the key bit here is that's actually a Sage sales order. Likewise, it would be a Sage quote. So again, being able to view that and even create new orders, but we'll touch on that shortly. If I go back to uh, I'll go back to Abbey Retail here a second. Again, we can see those tasks down to attachments, even emails, being able to send emails, attach emails from within the system as well. So just wanted to touch on those aspects. So that's 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 what you get with your basic basic user. So and whereas I see a basic user is probably somebody internal within your finance team wanting to log those. Where the intermediate comes in is you get all of that functionality, but then we move on to opportunities and cases. So from an opportunity perspective, the key bit here is is actually um, managing your your sales opportunities. As you can see, so I've logged in here. I can see my pipeline. I can see I'm setting a target in the background. I can see what my sales target is. Um, if only it was that low. But as we go through, we can then start to see. So for example, if I pick, uh, let's go for this particular opportunity here. Again, it's that same sort of theme. I've got my activity. I've got details on there. When do I think it's going to close margin? We've got weighted forecast in there where relevant. We can add tracking notes. So the concept of a tracking note as well is that as we go through um, the opportunities, it'd be the same with cases. We've tried to call the customer three, four times. It's just evidencing that in there. So adding a new tracking note saying um, uh, uh, prospect, not oh can't spell prospect not available call back tomorrow 
the end of the day, what we what that means is we've then got that activity history there. So I've, again, I've had I've been burnt with this in the past. Customer says nobody's tried to call them. Luckily for me, I build in all the tracking notes on the CRM system we used at the time. So I was able to evidence even emails that I'd sent out to say, well, okay, I've been trying there, trying to pull the wool over your eyes and get me into trouble. So certainly for me, that's that's a key one. Again, being able to set tasks. So certainly what's really important is, especially if you're managing a number of opportunities, is just very quickly you've spoken to them, you set your tracking notes up and just setting yourself a task to call them back tomorrow as well as then perhaps I'm going to send them an email just to say I'm going to call them back and you can do that from within the system. Now, as we come into uh, come into um, this area here, what we've got is the concept of being able to set up and record quotes, pro forma sales orders as well. So for example, I might want to set up a quote. So we've got Cherry in here, got the document date, defaulting myself as the uh, account manager, so I can actually just save that. Just uh, do that for a moment. And what I can do now is I can start to add lines. Now, imagine I'm out in remote, so I'm dialing into this from a web page. So I've, I'm, I'm, perhaps I could be on my iPad and I want to quickly put on a quote. Well, the great bit about this is as I start to search and I click in there, that's now going to pull through the stock items that we've got within our Sage system. So I'll pick my good old espresso machines. And as I select the espresso machine, it shows me the available amount in the warehouse. Uh, so, yep, so we'll go through that. We'll tab through if I had uh, what quantity we want. So the customer wants me to quote for three. It's also going to pull through our prices that we've got from within the system. Perhaps I've got some discounts in there as well. But again, I'm starting to now pull this room because it's not detached from Sage. The data is in Sage. Of course, I can start to fill in this. So the customers said they're going to want it by the end of the month. If I save that. That's now added the line from here. Actions, I could print it, uh, convert the quote to an order as well. But for the moment, I can set myself a task to follow it up as well. But for the moment, I've got a quote, which is quote number 73. If I just come back, go back into Sage now, when I look at my standard sales order quotations, I'll just amend a quote. There's quote number 73. I just amend the quotation here. There's my three espresso machines on there. So again, standard Sage quote or linked nicely through. Likewise, if I put the quote on in Sage, of course, I'd then be able to view that against the company record in the system as well. So we've got um, a number of benefits from there. So being able to manage manage your sales pipeline. Now, as we go through, so if I go back to that opportunity for a moment, um, and if we come come down to here, in terms of the, uh, the values, we can um, change the stages. So just by editing and saying, well, okay, actually stage now is we're negotiating. So being able to save that, update my opportunity values, and of course, all of that information is available, uh, you know, if you've got bespoke reports, et cetera, as well. Okay, so that's your that's your opportunities. I'm going to move down to cases. So the concept behind cases. Um, now, you could, in theory, use this for um, for your support tickets. In my opinion, it's not really designed for that. If you've got a very simple support ticket then process, then that uh, that would work. If 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 you've got a more detailed support, then probably something like Psycon Service would be the route to look, and that's what we use internally. What I see this more akin to, uh, for those of you who need to track or uh, find a way to track customer complaints, you might be ISO uh, certified, so you need a way of tracking your non-conformities, um, that sort of thing, but being able to manage. And because, of course, as you've seen, we can link cases to sales orders, purchase orders, we can link cases to stock as well. All of a sudden, this then adds that extra level. So, for example, uh, we've got a stock item. We've scheduled a task for somebody just to have a look because it fe feels like the quality is not so good. They start to look into it and go, yeah, there is something about this. Well, actually, what they could do then, they could create a case against the stock item and then schedule it for Darren to access. But Darren only has access now to the to the web. So because it's in Darren's name, all of a sudden, Darren's able to then manage the activity, add his track, uh, sort of manage the case, add his tracking details in their um, emails as he 
So as he starts to speak with the supplier, we can drag those details in there. Um, even even down to perhaps it's um, it's a sales order. So we've got a case against the sales order because we've dispatched it and some have arrived um, broken, for example. But we might might need to put a uh, sales order on to get some more out uh, for free of charge. That sort of thing. But being able to manage that within the system, and of course, what we've got. If I come back into Sage. Tell you what, TeamViewer and Sage now look identical, don't they? Uh, back into here, being able to also then see the details inside of Sage uh, from a case perspective uh, as well, if I've got access to that inside of Sage. Okay, a couple of other features then just want to touch on, uh, and I'm going to do this now back in Sage itself, but then jump across. So it's how we manage the data. So the first one is um, is the concept of these dashboards. So inside of Sage, now what we often get is, well, that's great. We need this type of report or we need this type of report. But actually that's where the real strength of what we've done and our relationship with uh, the guys at EBS comes in. Because all that data is stored in the Sage database, whilst we've got some default dashboard options, which I'm about to talk about, actually, so long as the data is in there in a logical fashion, then Darren and the team at EBS get hold of that data for you or you can and there's a multitude of options you've got um standard reports in sage a bit static i probably wouldn't you've got odbc excel there's options now like power bi darren i know you guys are working with focus as well uh, which is a great sort of dashboarding utility so you've got those sort of options there to get that bespoke data out the other option which we give you out of the box so we've got some standard ones so for example inside of sage being able to see my sales so within this particular view being able to see my my um uh, my sales and forecast again with those lines there my cases my tasks my opportunities being able to see one from a team perspective so as a uh, as, as a leader of the team being able to see all of the team's activity within there as well as all of the that the, my team's targets customer service so with your cases even options we've got customers using um credit control as well with this and by the way there you go there's my Reminder that's popped up. So I'm just going to snooze that for five minutes. And actually, if I come into the web, we've also got reminders in the web as well. So um, that's that's a nice touch just for you there. So it doesn't just have to be in the Sage system itself. But where I want to come down to is the ability to create your own custom dashboards. Now, if I come down into maintenance and just into this area here, these are actually written using SQL. So you can have list views so here with different fields in there uh sorry a list view as well but you can see they're just written by sql it could be a pie chart or a bar chart so again you can start to use these inside of sage and they don't just have to be crm data they can be a combination so again speak to darren and the team at ebs uh, about that the other option that you've got is the concept of what we call card lists now i'd love to say that i wrote the sequel for this uh, anybody who knows me will know that uh, i certainly didn't because i don't have the skill set for that but here i've created and if i just edit we can see the sequel within there so i've created these um sort of card lists and this was an idea from a um an ebs customer who said well they were using another crm system they really wanted to move over to this but they got this kanban style reporting which was really important to them so they could then see cases by stage, that sort of thing. So we added it into the system, uh, working with them for that. So we've got this concept of card lists. So if I just pick one in Sage and then I will show you what they look like in, in the web, but just being able to in a very quick view, see opportunities by stage, by date, by the team. So perhaps you've got multiple sales teams and also by employee. But if I come into the web and I go to these cards, being able to see again, all of those cards or just my cards, and then looking at opportunities, seeing just my opportunities in this list view. And of course, as we update them, so perhaps the one by stage, as they update, then if, and I update my opportunities, then they're going to move as well. So they very much use this on uh, from a cases perspective for them to manage, um, again, any complaints and that. And they knew as they moved through that, so long as the logged ones was empty and they were starting to be action through and Obviously, they could uh, they could move on from the day. So just different ways of displaying that information. OK, last thing that I just want to touch on, I will come back into Sage then, is third and final, which is the advanced side of things. 
which is around campaign management. Now, we don't have a, um, a MailChimp account at the moment. They're, they're looking to set that up for us, but we do have out of the box integration with MailChimp. So for those of you using MailChimp, then um, if you go into the settings, it, there's an API, which you can then in, the, in our uh, settings, CRM settings, you can add your MailChimp API into here. We've then got the concept of creating an audience and um, and then being able to send, uh, create kind of a, uh, what, what data you want to filter to send that then up to MailChimp. Now you do have to be careful with the licensing. I do know from a MailChimp perspective, they jump onto another, so certainly engage with the guys at EBS and ourselves on that if this is an area you're going to be using. But what we do is rather than you creating all the campaign and the content inside of uh, our CRM, that's what MailChimp is perfect for. You know, that's what it does out of the box. But the idea is then pulling down the results, the number of clicks uh, as we go through. And we're currently working with a couple of clients in terms of what other data can we pull down, you know, to potentially create, for example, tasks for salespeople to follow up on, on, on those as well. So it's 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 an area which we're um, we're working, say, with a couple of clients. So again, if you're interested in that, speak to Darren and the team from EBS and we can we can touch in on that. OK, the last one. Uh, no, I did say campaigns was the last one, but the last one I want, do want to touch on is um, the concept of these flows. So I mentioned earlier, if you want to bespoke your screens, uh, one of the other areas that you can do with Sage CRM is you can create bespoke workflows and you can keep them very detailed. So what we've done is we've created a simplified version of this inside. So you do all the management in Sage, of course, from the web, then um, it would pick up those flows and we're just working on that element at the moment. But the idea behind these is starting to just drive perhaps some of the detail. So here's an example that I've got where the flow starts and it starts when we put a lead on. And what we want to do, so if, if the status is in lead, we want it to move to either negotiating or order in progress. I mean, don't get me wrong, <laughs> we want that. There's probably a few steps between that. But the idea here is being able to say, well, those are going to be the next stages. And actually, as I look at the transition, very simple to say, so we're going to move it to negotiating, but also what actions do we want at that particular time? So when we move it to negotiating, do we want to set certain fields to, so rather than me then have to go, well, it's at this stage, this stage, if I say it's moving to negotiating, set the fields to say it's in progress, etc. even down to, do we want to auto send an email? So uh, for a, for our partner seminar last year, we actually set this up whereby it's as we logged a lead, it automatically sent an email to uh, to the account manager on there to say there's a new lead logged. Or do we want to manually send an email so we can tailor it, create a task? So as we change it, it's going to automatically pop up with a task. So again, we've kept it very simple, but this concept of being able to move things through. Now, me personally, I may, I'm actually going to dismiss that now, otherwise that will just keep popping up and popping up. I actually, I'm a fan of automation. I'm a fan of trying to cut out admin, but I'm also a fan of keeping things simple. And I've seen too many CRM systems where it's death by grip. And what I mean by that is you, you can't move from stage one to stage four. You have to go to stage two to stage three. Now, for some sectors, Absolutely, that will work. So, you know, if if um, if in case management, for example, that was, uh, you know, I'm thinking back to my HR days where disciplinary it has to go in a certain order. Well, that makes sense. But if you're looking to do it on a sales uh, flow, which is obviously the viewpoint that I've had for many years, the challenge is there are times where you do that first meeting and you jump straight away to negotiating. You don't want to go through first demo, second demo, third demo. And it's and all that happens is certainly from my experience is I just stopped using it because it was restrictive rather than supportive. So again, I think for these, we kept it simple, but it's an area which um which you just need to be mindful of making sure that um the outputs that you want uh, aren't too restrictive for the inputs that um that salespeople want to put in there. So but we do have that concept that we've built in as well. I mean, there's lots more I can touch on, but Darren, I'm conscious I've been talking for uh, for a good sort of 35 minutes now. Um, are there any questions in the chat at this stage? We can open up the floor for questions. I've got a couple that I've got myself. Um, 
So, it, I mean, it, 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 it's a simple CRM system, and we found with our clients that, you know, they get this up and running very, very quickly. But, yes, you know, how long would it take to set up? I mean, our experience is, you know, a day or two when you can be zooming away and using the the, the solution. Yeah, I think I think it's a difficult one because how long is a piece of string? Uh, it, it is the answer in this area because, again, it depends how I suppose it depends where on the curve of CRM systems customers are, depends on um, how much data they want to import and those sorts of elements. But you are right because it does what it needs to do. It is actually relatively straightforward. I mean, in terms of um, in terms of getting it set up once it's installed with the API and all and the, and the web portals configured. And you do that initial migration, you set your employees up and you link the the uh, the license type to it. Actually, you could start interacting straight away. It's then down to what areas do you, you know, do you want? Do you want to change and tweak some of those? Um, uh, you know, it might be under opportunities, for example, in the maintenance, you know, the outcomes. Do you want to tweak any and add your own outcomes on here as well? Or do you want to change some of the classifications? Do you want to add analysis field? So that's the bit that sort of takes the time. But very much the emphasis is, whilst certainly the projects I've been involved with, it's a supportive bit because you've got access to the data, then you can start to configure this yourself. So yes, a couple of days, I would say, sort of tipping on average, but we have seen some five, six days, but it's not the 30, 40, 50, 60 day type projects that I've seen with, with some CRM systems. So we talked about the three different licenses that are available, your basic, intermediate and advanced. I don't think there's any reason why we shouldn't say how much those are. No, absolutely. It's um, so now you're going to test me. Uh, if I remember off the top of my head, I mean, so what we do is there's no, uh, it's all on subscription uh, and we've kept it very simple. So please correct me if I've got this wrong, Darren, but I believe a basic user is £15 per user per month. Uh, an intermediate is 20 and an advanced is 25. So, and all you do is, now this is the clever bit. Um, and I know I keep using the word clever, but I, I I love this. So if I come into my employees area and I'll pick, I'll pick on me because that's who I'm logged in as. What we have is the Sage user. So if the user has access to Sage, as I do, so you can see in the bottom left-hand corner, Steve, that's my Sage user. By linking the user there, and as long as I've then got my CRM license up here, what I'm able to do is I'm able to access the functionality in Sage and in the web portal. H however, if I'm not a Sage user, well, then you leave that, that particular one blank there and I can then just access the functionality in the web. So that one user, you don't have to have a special Sage user or a special Cycon user, it's just the one, the one named user. And the only other thing you will need is just a Sage connected user, one of those just for the API to connect. So again, you might have 20, 30 people outside of Sage, they can all access the web to, to do the things that we've gone through today. Um, and all that goes through that single API connection. Yeah, I mean, our experience so far is that most licenses that we we've put in our intermediates generally um yeah. but uh, it is it is worth emphasizing that if you're only using the uh, web access client uh then you don't need a sage user yeah and i think i think that's the key bit and ultimately it's you know with the licenses because they're if, because it's on subscription you know if you started and you said right okay um we need one basic for nikki we'll have one intermediate for um, Simon and one intermediate, uh, one advanced for you, Darren. And actually, um, Nikki now needs cases because inside of, say, she's she needs to set up some cases against sales orders, for example. Well, you can swap, you can swap that user. Just go, well, okay, well, we'll cancel the basic and we'll just upgrade that to an intermediate. So you've got that lovely flexibility there as well with it. And the last, the one thing I did, uh, so we added recently, which I've kind of skipped over. Is the concept of this Cycon system admin. So feedback often is, um, well, how do we restrict what, what a user can view? So of course, inside of Sage, we can do that using Sage admin, create a role, you know, um, a CRM, and then say what menu options they've got access to. 
But of course, in the web, we couldn't control that. So what we've done is we've created this concept of a Psycon system admin. So what you do is you've got your you've got your roles. Now I've just got all CRM, and if I just um, if I edit the role within there, you can then put your employees into that particular role itself. And what we're able to do then is we're able to assign features by the role. Say well, so you might have I can see everything, but it might be that you might have a um, CRM light. I don't know, for example, where um, actually from a salesperson, I don't need to see cases, so we can just switch off uh, and say, well, what can they see? Can they copy cases, delete cases, view cases? So right the way down to those individual screens there, and then when you assign that to that role to your user, and you can have multiple roles assigned just as you can with Sage, that will then restrict what those users are able to view. So again, it's just that extra level of control which we've added based on feedback uh, as we always do within the system. Perfect. I'm probably going to put you on the spot a little bit. I mean, the from the initial release of the of, of Psycon CRM, this is, you know, miles away from where it started. There's lots and lots of new features that have been added into the system. And as you mentioned earlier, you know, uh, requests come from uh, users basically and if they are deemed to be worthwhile uh, changes to the to the software then they will be put into the next release now is where are we in terms of sort of next releases what are you planning for later releases is that something you can share that's a great that's a great question so we're um so that I think there's a few answers in terms of what you've pinned in. Yeah, so, you know, the product absolutely has moved on. What we tend to do when we launch something uh, new, we did it with barcoding, for example, is you get enough of a framework out there so it's a palatable product. But actually, the best way to grow, you can either sit there and try to develop something and spend four or five years before you release it, but you always run the risk of, even when you release it, you've not thought of everything and you might be behind the curve by the time it gets released. So we always get it out there and then start to, uh, to to get feedback. And as it moves from its infancy into evolving to establish, it's something we've uh, we've been successful at doing with a number of the products. So yes, you are absolutely right. It is, you know, it's massively moved on. And certainly as we get, you know, um, uh, get access to newer technologies. Now, in terms of what's on the roadmap, we've just finished, um, we, we, we're changing the way that, um, that sort of releases are, are going at the moment. That's something which, uh, we'll be sharing more, Darren, we're at the uh, next partner event. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully you guys are are coming to that um, in terms of what the methodology is going to be. But at the moment, uh, I've got meetings over the next few weeks to start to sit down with the um, with each of the product owners to start to then shape, look at the wish list, and start to shape what are we going to add in each of the products. So at the moment, I can't share that, but a couple of bits um, certainly I know. Which, uh, which customers are asking for. A bit more on the campaigns that I alluded to earlier. So I know there's going to be aspects of that. So how do we bring more information down into the system to drive that? That's certainly one thing that's on the list. The rest of it, you'll have to wait, I'm afraid. Okay. <laughs> <Pass the paper. laughs> um, Sorry, the, Darren. So you've got the dashboards on there. I think it's worth mentioning for any any of you that are out there that have got things like a uh, Psycon enhancement pack, which I know a lot of you do, then there is dashboard functionality included with that too now. Yeah, so that's a great, great point. I mean, <laughs> the enhancement pack, it's, I did a, did a, I did a webinar probably last year now, and, um, and it was one of those, we often get asked to do demos of it, and I'm like, you can't demo. I'd be here all day, and there's so many things in there which I don't. But I went through for this webinar and just picked out some of the bits that I thought, and there was there's a lot of great stuff in there which people, even if you've got it, you're probably not aware. So have a look at the help and user guide. But Darren's right. What we did was we dropped these dashboards in, so you've got ten dashboards where you can maintain the dashboard panes. Um, oh, there's a couple of examples there. So just a very simple this view, and the way that they work is once you've once you've got them in there. You can have, as we go into the dashboard itself, you can have up to four panes. You can see how long, how often do you want to refresh them? Uh, do we want one, two, three, or four? And the top left 
you know, what do you want on the top right as well? Even down to um, being able to pop the panel out and perhaps put it on another on another screen. So, I mean, I'll give some examples of where this is really powerful with the Cycon project module. Um, we've designed one with the customer where uh, they've got three panes. The one across the bottom is just a list view similar to this, but it's got all of the details that the customer wants in the right order. And what they do is they just right mouse click, they export it out to Excel couple of little tweaks, but then they import that because it's in the same format, same number of rows. That then is their nominal journal. So they import that journal and they'll do that every week. So it's a great way where they've used one of our dashboards in a way that that works for the business. So because it's SQL, you know, um, it's well, like any reporting, everybody wants to drag and drop, but you can never get to the, the, the lower level that you want. These I think are really great because because it's written by SQL you're at that tab tabular level. So what I would say is have a chat again with, with the guys at EBS on this. If you've got access to these dashboards and half the battle is knowing what, what you want. So, you know, as so long as you know what you want, speak to them and see what, uh, see if that's possible through, uh, through these options. Thanks, Steve. Just for the record, we've got a Cycon Enhancements webinar scheduled for the 17th of October. If you can't wow. wait that long, if you can't wait that long, <laughs> then I'm sure we can put something together for for people on an individual basis. But uh, I would say probably 50% of our Sage users have the enhancement pack. It does add lots and lots of um, additional features. We're not oh, here to talk about that today. No, are we? we are. But, we are. But there's some cracking little add-ons in there. So yeah, um, definitely get yourself booked up for that one. I would suggest. Are there any questions from anybody? watching out there so yeah i mean for, for, for us it'd be really good to see if we could look at how i mean like tracking information to see sort of like a work if we could look at a list of open opportunities and the the tracking history is that are we able to to see that in the in any reports currently so in terms of uh, so in terms of standard out of the shop uh um reports i mean there, there are some the thing for me is whilst we talk about this being off the shelf, there's no such thing as a standard report. Uh, everybody wants something different. So, so long as the data is in there. So, I mean, we've got some examples here. I mean, in terms of opportunities, you've got the dashboard. So if I go into my team's opportunities, we can, uh, if I just pull that up there, we've got this particular view so I can see the stage, the progress. So where are they? Um, uh, the due date you've also got if i come into um the opportunity search so this is one that i personally use so again i'll just do it for the opportunities i've got i can actually go through and see the value of the pipeline uh the, the weighted forecast as well start to drill down into those so there's lots of different ways that certainly you know, because we use this in-house that i look at uh, my team's opportunities but if if there's a specific report where you want to see um all of the open opportunities uh what stage they're at and the last tracking note then that would be either use one of those custom dashboards and just get um the guys to write sql or again it could be a sage report or, or an external one so that would be something which would be bespoke to yourself not something that's available but you could get out that day uh get out that data well that was that was harder to say than it should have been <laughs> no that's that's great thank you yeah, so I'm um, certainly uh, and, and, and for everybody, for me, and it's not just the Cycon stuff with reports, so long as the data is in there in a logical fashion, so you're not trying to report on opportunity by stage by case tracking, for example, which would never be linked, then you can get at that data. And, and often this is this is the this is the bit is, you know, people will use the standard reports without engaging with their business partner or Cycon to say, look, this is really critical for us. You know, can we get at that? And I've seen over the years with customers working with their partners, um, even things down to ODBC with Excel, there was a client where it, it would take them four or five days each month to, to build the management pack for the board meeting. They set it up with ODBC. They were able to refresh, make some tweaks, and they got that down. They would spend half a day on it. Now, they didn't listen to me when I said they should probably still tell the board that it takes them four and a half days and then just crack on with some of the other stuff they did. But actually, that was a huge time saving. There was no bespoke. That was just a bespoke report that they worked with the business partner. So certainly any, any things like that, speak with Darren, speak with Simon and the team 
you know, and um, and uh, see what uh, see what's possible. Okay, thank you. And then just another question: um, how how difficult would it be to migrate from an existing CRM to this? Um, yeah, we we use Sage CRM currently. Yeah. Yeah, so we we used to use Sage CRM. So what we don't have is we don't have a migration utility. We did look at it. Uh, the problem is, especially with Sage CRM, because it can be bespoke so much, you can't guarantee people are using the same field that you want to link. So what we have is, so long as you can get the data out, we've got a huge array of imports. So once you've migrated, so the first step is be to migrate the, the, the records you've got. You can actually export that data and just tidy it up and then re-import it. But we have uh, imports for customers. So as long as you can get it into our templates, it's a great opportunity as well to cleanse it. You can import company details, addresses, GDPR. You can also, if I come to people, from people perspective, you can, oh, sorry, utilities. You can import your people as well. You can import opportunities. You can import uh, cases as well. I believe that's still in there. You can import cases. So you can utilize our multitude array of, of, of templates uh, to get that data in but what we don't do is we don't have a utility to migrate everything across but okay. i don't see that as a bad thing no great Perfect. thank you yep no worries excellent any other questions did not darren i think it's a record for me that's four minutes inside the allotted time <laughs> no that's great so um Thanks everybody for joining us today. Uh, I hope you uh, take something away from uh, what you've seen. As Steve has already said, if you've got any questions that you think about afterwards, then uh, fire them over to uh, to uh, myself or, um, or 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 use the info at ebs.tech email address. Uh, oh yes, I and Steve is now going to tell you about the user guide. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, again, everything we've gone through, do visit cycling.co.uk, go to the help and user guides, and there's there's an install guide, but there's also, if you look at the user guide, there's screenshots and descriptions of the basic relevant functionality that we've gone through as well. So uh, do have a look at that, but I always think there's nothing nothing better than getting getting on a call or just talking about your specific situation as well, you know, understanding how, uh, Niall, as you mentioned, understanding how you're using your say CRM system, how would that correlate with with ours? Happy to have those sort of level discussions as well. Fantastic. So uh, as I said earlier, we we have recorded this session, so uh, that will be edited and, and published on our YouTube channel in the next few days. And we'll send an email out to you as and when that's actually there. So brilliant. Thank you again for attending and uh, we'll catch up with you all soon. Thank you, Steve, for, for doing that as well. You're more than welcome, Darren. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks all. Take care.